I'm looking forward to the future under Bogey. You know, we're, we're making the right signings. He believes in himself um, and he believes he has what it takes to get out of this league. So uh, we'll have to wait and see. But it's all about personnel um, and just change. We've got to get rid yeah. of some of the dead wood in the squad um, and rebuild. And uh, I look forward to that next season. But the ownership wise, They've clearly made multiple false promises to Bowyer. I think that's quite clear. Um, and life will be better when they're gone. Hello and welcome to the Blues Focus podcast with me, your host, John Graham. Um, thank you for taking the time for downloading this pod. Uh, if you're watching it on YouTube, please subscribe if you haven't already. Leave your comments. And hopefully we've got a few things to discuss over the coming weeks. Or if you're downloading this on various podcast outlets, then I hope you enjoy the listen. Um, before we get started, uh, obviously the two usual protagonists, even though Tom spent eternity to eat his spaghetti bolognese. Tom, how are you? Uh, I'm good, thank you, mate. How are you? <laughs> yeah, man, fabulous. It, it was it was definitely worth the wait. Uh, Carl, <laughs> and, and how are you, mate? Yeah, all good. Thank you, buddy. All you good. good. Right, let's get involved. Uh, going to talk through the last two fixtures, bit of a mixed bag. Um, some, I think, very, very ordinary and some still probably reeling from the weekend. I don't actually know what I saw there. It, I think it actually was decent football. Uh, it's been a while. So, um, Carl, uh, let, let's just maybe cover off the, 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 the Bournemouth game. Expectations probably not uh, particularly high and uh, they didn't disappoint no, no. I think that whilst I think we had maybe a three and a half minute flurry in the first half where we, I think we got a couple of corners and maybe people should have been on the end of stuff. We weren't, I think if we're honest, we weren't really in the game until Lerma got sent off, which, you know, not really sure why the Bournemouth fans seem to take umbrage with Hernandez for that challenge. Not our fault he tried to study halfway up his thigh, was it? Um but yeah, I mean, I don't think any of us really hand on heart expected anything, especially, you know, the signings they made on deadline day, which was just ridiculous. Um, I think those alone probably cost more than our entire squad, let alone the rest of their bloody team. Um, I think uh, I think I referred to, I think all we kind of really wanted was at least some kind of passion fight. You know, certainly with the way that the Sheffield United get, uh, game ended, it was a bit kind of crap and, and stuff, and you kind of want that. And... It just didn't feel like there was any of that until Lerma got sent off and, and from there it picked up, obviously. But yeah, no real expectations, just not a, a 6-2 battering was was kind of my thinking behind it. Yeah, I must admit it too, Neil. I was uh, trying to do anything else but watch the game as it just had that horrible 4-5, maybe 6 about it. But uh, fair play, it didn't happen. Tom, Tom, what were your thoughts on it? Um I feel like it was an entertaining game. We'll, we'll go, we'll go with that angle. <laughs> you know, there, there was many ups and downs. There was a point where you really thought we were going to get back into the game. Uh, momentum was on our side, um, but then we just showed exactly why we are nowhere near Bournemouth. Um, I mean, their bench was pretty much better than our entire first team. Um, and that, that sums it up. They just had so much more quality on the ball. I think we surprised them a bit. Obviously, the red card aided us, um, but it was a red card. You can't just go around drop kicking who you like. Um, it's, it's not how football works. Um, but yeah, no, I, I feel like it was nice to see a bit of fight, make the game a little bit entertaining. It's crazy how much on El Hernandez can change a game for you. But I think we as fans were a bit baffled why... He didn't start in the first place, but you could understand if you're going to rest him. That's probably not a bad game to choose because are we likely to get anything from Bournemouth away? Probably not. So um, I suppose you can see some aspects, but um, no, he looked very fit and sharp to me when he came on, got us back in the game. Um, we had a few chances through Gardner and Duke but we just couldn't seem to put the ball either side of the keeper. It's like every single shot had to be directly at the centre of the goal. Um, otherwise, if we we uh, we had put it either side, we could have been talking about a 3-2 Blues or a 2-2 a or a 3-3. But hey-ho, that's football. They're a much better side than us at the end of the day. So um, it was it was nice just to just be entertained for at least five minutes. 
Yeah, I, I, I think they've got. Um, obviously, they, they'd had that embarrassing defeat in the FA Cup. Uh, was it three or four days before? And uh, and they, I think they definitely started as if they were going to, uh, you know, give us a battering. But you know, when when you're back three is Pedersen, Mengi, and Conan, you're thinking, yeah, th- this is going to be quite a long evening. And yeah, I, I think we just about managed to just hang in. You buy our fingertips, you know, two 0 getting into into half time. Um, really, really good to see. Obviously, Graham again. I thought I thought he got this ability not to actually be to play, but still to get a cross in um, on a much lower level. A bit like Beckham used to do. I'm no way comparing the two, um, but he he doesn't need to be to player, and he's getting he gets quality in, and uh, I think that's pretty hard to defend. Um, I, and I think the the whole Sunjic starting thing is is now become, uh, yeah. I, I think I think that's uh, days are numbered now. Um, it's just too limited. I think we were we gave him a lot of respect. I think in the first half, and and probably rightly so. But if you're just going to invite that on, you, you're just going to you've got no chance. And uh, I think the, the the gaffer said that Hernandez didn't start because he was feeling his hamstring in the the end of the previous game. I think he came off maybe. Um, and yeah, you're probably right, Tom. I think if we'd have played Luton midweek, he'd have probably started. Um, but but the, you know, there's there's without sounding defeatist, I, I think even the the best championship side Birmingham have had probably the you know when we went up going to Bournemouth against that Bournemouth side away, you'd, you'd take a point either you know with a really really strong side, and we definitely didn't have that in the week. So um, I think they probably did enough not just for the manager in the squad, but probably for the fans to think that, you know, Luton might be a, a different ball game altogether. And um, it certainly was a different ball game in so many ways, um, certainly after the 14th minute. Uh, so w- when we, when we uh, again, starting lineup, uh, Tom, what, what were your thoughts? Happy, happy with the, the changes, albeit I suppose defence is, is, is an ongoing worry. Yeah, um, the the defence is obviously the the glaring uh, problem right now with the side. And when obviously Mengi got injured in the Bournemouth game, you were like, oh no, 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 no. This could be a long old season. Um, you, you could just see it all going wrong. But I mean, I said on a pod, uh, probably I think it was the last podcast we did. To be fair, um, how angry I was that we didn't bring in another defender. Um, and I think, you know, I, I voiced my opinion on how frustrated I was with guards for not bringing in another defender or, you know, leaving it so late um, in the day. And we are starting to pay the price for that now um, with pretty much every central defender we've ever had getting injured. Um, I'm sure the fullbacks will probably follow suit as well, uh, just for a laugh. Um, but you never know. We'll, we'll see. Obviously, Andre Wisdom apparently training with Blues. I think it depends on sort of his fitness and his general overall condition. I mean, if he's relatively fit and not far off match fitness, then um, you, you'd sign him because we just need bodies at the back at the moment. Um, but if he's well off match fitness, then there's no point. You'd rather just wait for... Uh, the other defenders to come back and save your money. So uh, we'll have to wait and see. Um, but the midfield, I feel like our, our best midfield probably has Bakuna, guards and probably Woods in it. Um, that That's definitely seemed like a good sort of trio so far. Um, but Lyle Taylor is the one that you just want to see in the, the lineup every week, really, at the moment. So as so long as he's in there and Hernandez is in there, then I'm happy. Yeah, and 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 Carl, just on, I think that that midfield three, I, th- I think that's probably something we've been trying to find a balance for. Crikey, quite a long time, you know. I, I, we've not really had that sort of. I, I, I would class Woods him the most awkward footballer off the ball I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> but give him a football at his feet, he just comes to life. And I think that bland, that that blend of a you know good footballer. The energy of Gardner and and Bakuna that just you know we we talk and you, you're right, Tom. You know when you say guards not bringing a defender in, it, 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 just basic. You know we, we we've been shit at the back for years. You know it's been scr- you know we we probably need more defenders than anything else. Just to hope that we drop on a decent one. 
but you know the guy who did the business on Bakuna for four hundred thousand. I mean, Jesus Christ! I mean, that, that's. I mean, I know it's albeit three or four games, but he's done enough for me to to really, uh, you know, that's that is a that is a play you can really build a midfield around. It, yeah, it's his face brilliant. painted on the wall behind your head. That's well, it would. Yeah, that's what we're looking yeah. at. <laughs> on the mural, on the mural, Tyree shirt, fantastic. <laughs> um, but but yeah, I, I, I just think you know, as that that sort of um, the game progressed, Carl. So what were your obviously um, very much a, a happy birthday for you on Saturday? Thank you. So uh, were, were you? I mean, you chuff chuff with the the way we we started, chuff with the balance, and and what would you take on that sort of first half performance? Yeah, I mean, I think. I think it was a very scrappy game for, for both sides. I don't think there was any real particular good football played um, up until obviously the, the, the tennis balls in the 14th minute, which obviously upset Luton's momentum and ruined the game for them. And they were unable to recover from that big shock to their system. Despite being all over social media for weeks beforehand, they couldn't prepare for it. Poor Luton. Um, but I think after that, and then we obviously went and scored, and, and I think we said earlier, when we, before we started recording, John, I think that was it. I didn't see them ever coming back into it. And that they seemed to, once we scored, there just seemed to be this kind of rush of confidence through the team. And yeah. they just seemed to think, we've got this. They haven't got nothing that we can't deal with. Um, and the balance just seemed to find itself. And, and they just seemed to absolutely just, just click. And it was just so nice to sit there and go, we've got a football team. What the hell's yeah. going on? It's night and day to the, the end of the Sheffield United game to, um, okay, maybe Bournemouth is a bit of an exception like the Fulham game, but but Bournemouth to a degree, certainly defensively, you know, they kind of went forward together. They defended together. I mean, I think Lyle Taylor ran 60 yards at one point to put a tackle in, you know, and that's the kind of stuff you need. And it just seemed like they were really, for one of the few times of the season, actually working together and they knew what the game plan was and they were sticking to it. And I think... As basic as that sounds, it worked. Yeah, and and I think that um, so many games. I mean, we talked about the Sheffield United game, and you know when we the sort of enforced change with Woods coming off completely derailed the way we were playing. And at no point on Saturday did we look like we dropped off. We just kept playing the way that we'd been playing to get us to one nil and then two nil and then keep going. And then you know whether it be. Bowie's been guilty of it a few times. Karanka was the bloody ma- master at it. You know, as soon as you get your nose in head, your head just shut up shop. And we didn't do that. And I hope they take something from it. Because uh, I, was, I was saying to, to my kids when we, we went to the game, and so they just don't want any subs. They don't want any subs. I know it's a long season, but when you're in a game like this and you've got complete control, don't change it. Because, you know, I, I, to be fair, you know, we, we battered them. In, in two games and I'm struggling to understand how they are where they are but you know there's been a lot of games this season so they're there on merit you don't want to give them a foothold in any way shape or form and I'm glad that he, he wasn't tempted to do that um, because I think he, he he has sort of edged his bets a little bit but I think we're really controlled um, and just one thing about Taylor we'll put the, more than one but the one that I'll, I'll mention now there was a point where I think Pedersen had the ball just in the left back area, and he it was either an aimless smash or something like that. And Taylor absolutely emptied him. I mean, proper eyeball emptied him, and you you just don't. I don't remember seeing that. And and you know, Pedersen's. There's been plenty of times where people should be tucking into him, and he just feels like Taylor's got the appetite for it. And I hope it's not playing for a contract or playing for a move somewhere else or whatever it may be. But on with you, Tom, I think that it's been a long, long time since I can remember not, you know, really wanting to see somebody on the team sheet that, that and could keep the momentum going. But I think, you know, that one-on-one, how many times have we seen Hogan in that position this season? And, and, and that for me, and we'll, we'll talk about the, the three signings in a minute, but you know that that for me is is that's the difference. That's where you know Gardner and Bowie have got to take a whole a whole heap of credit because you know I I'd not seen a lot of him. He's you know Charlton to Forest, not game get any game at Forest. I'm not thinking we've signed 
an absolute world beater. But you know, certainly from what I've seen so far, he's um, he looks he looks he looks a good player to me. So what 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 do you what do you think about um, just Taylor in general, Tommy? You think that this could be a long term move for him, or this is again we've talked about loan players, and this is the this is the challenge, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah, definitely. Um... It's an interesting one because it's nice to actually have a finisher for a change. You could probably say we have that in Deeney, but I think Taylor's a lot more mobile. Yeah. Um, and the role that Deeney was playing in our squad, it, he wasn't really sort of... He, obviously, he's a great finisher, but he was actually being a bit more of a playmaker at times as well. Whereas Lyle Taylor is just an out-and-out -out striker. Um, he can hold up the ball really, really well. And um, can, you know, play others into his game. But a lot of the time, he just take the ball on himself and uh, he'll, he'll find the back of the net. And it, it's nice because we haven't had a strike like that for a little while. Um, so I do feel like he's going to give us plenty of goals towards the end of the season. And it's probably just the sort of signing we needed. Uh, personally, I hope, you know, guards breaks his little transfer policy thing again and just signs him and doesn't go, oh, no, you're over the age of 28. We can't sign you. I think we're past that point now. Mm -hmm. um, I think we'd be silly not to go back in for him um, because it looks like he's still got a lot to offer at this level, particularly under Boya. So, um, yeah, I, I hope we do sign Taylor permanently. I do think he's probably the most realistic of the... Uh, the loanies that we've got at the moment to actually sign permanently. Um, but, I mean, today, I don't really have a game for you, but I do have a question, um, a big question that might take a lot of thought. It might not. I don't know. Um, but I'll ask you both now, if you could sign one of our loans, one of our current loans, any of our current loans permanently, just one of them, who would it be? Hmm. So, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll go first. Um, oh Christ. I think I would probably go Taylor simply because, it, like you said, Tommy, he looks like a goal scorer, like a natural goal scorer. He's a handful. He made the first goal. He, there was a couple of absolutely just ridiculous touches he pulled one out of the sky on the far right hand side in the I don't know first half at the end of the first half it was just and he's a shit house you know he's he's you know <laughs> give, giving the Luton fans a load of clog he's just a proper blues player and I, I really really rate Hernandez really rate him um but the currency for blues has always been trying to find a goal scorer and you know if you take you know, Che out the equation for what one and a half seasons. You know, that we've been looking for a twenty goal a season player forever, and um, I'd always take that over a speed merchant potentially. But again, he he's he scored a couple of goals, but I I just think maybe Taylor edges it just. But uh, I, I, I I don't think there's much. I think Nengi's he's got a great future, but I'd I'd probably much rather like to see a. A season 25, 26, 27 year old centre half that's just going to boss that back line. Um, you know, uh, again, show my age to do on every fucking podcast. Liam Dash type is what I want. Just no nonsense, real leader, clear people out, don't mess about, you know, give it five yards to the people that can play football, that sort of centre half. Um, and, and, and yeah, I, I think. Yeah, Chong's he's, he's a good player, but I think for me, Taylor, for lots and lots of reasons. Carl? Mm, yeah, I think I think Chong has got a bigger future elsewhere. So I don't think it's worth even contemplating that. You know, whether Man United exercise their option they've got on him or not, I think he's he's off somewhere bigger. I think he's a quality player, but he's not going to be sticking around the Blues. It's a really close... You know, if... <sighs> If Sarkic had stayed and stayed fit, I would have made an argument for him. But if we're basing it on the players we've got now, it's such a close call between Hernandez and Taylor. It's uh, um, 
probably for the absolute shit house factor, I'll go with Taylor, to be perfectly honest. The blowing kisses at Luton Town fans for no other reason other than to wind them up was just perfect. Um, but no, I, I mean, you've you've both kind of said everything about Taylor that, that I could say, you know, he just looks, he knows where the back of the net is. And I know that's such a cliche thing to say about a striker, but he's got the experience at this level. He knows what to do. He knows where to find the back of the net. He's proved that in the three games he played because I think, None of his goals has necessarily been that easy either. When you when you look at them on merit, they're not tap ins, um, and they're really good finishes. And I think, like you say, that is that is quality that you know you really need in a championship side. You know, and I, I think, yeah. So so I think I'd, I'd have to agree with you. I think it would be him, but I think it would be a very close call between him and Hernandez if, if they only were told they could sign one of them. But I personally, I'd agree with you both, Taylor, for me as well. well yeah, geez, I, I think that's fair. Um, I th- obviously, I love Taylor to pieces. I mean, my wallpaper uh, on my phone says how much I love Lyle Taylor. Uh, but just, just for a different opinion, I suppose, I will go Hernandez, but I do feel like I would have gone Hernandez anyway, just for the pure factor of how every time I watch him play for Blues, I'm like, we just don't deserve you. You're too good to be here. You shouldn't be here. Why are you here? <laughs> and, um, I, you know, I do sort of watch in disbelief. It's like I I just can't believe a player of his talent is actually playing for us at the moment. So, uh, no, I am surprised. I think, you know, Chong is one you could look at and think, oh, that's, you know, if we, if we had the opportunity to bring him back permanently, that's a real long-term project there. And we know what Chong can offer, despite being a bit injury-prone. But again, another another lone player I love. I'd love to see Matty come back. I'd love to see Mengi come back. So just bring the whole lone <laughs> band back together. Let's do it. Um, I honestly feel like we could properly build a team around some of those names. Um, but I... Probably, I think you'll only see at least one of them return. Maybe, maybe two at a push. Um, I, I, I'd be amazed if uh, if if Taylor keeps going the way he is. Bowie will be making severe, um, you know, I think demands around keeping him uh, and 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 Hernandez because you know you they they got these players and you know I, i'd certainly say that you know i hadn't seen a lot of either of them to make a call and now i've seen them in the flesh it's like you know you're right tom you you, you can you could certainly there's taylor's obviously you know no spring chicken but for two seasons after this one you could absolutely build a side around hernandez and around taylor and around bakuna uh gardner to a degree um Really like Graham. I don't know what I, it, it's so tough because he's he only gets a game when he's playing out of position, but he never lets us down. Um, it's, mm. it's just, yeah, it's, it's odd, but um, yeah, I, I I would be massively disappointed. And you know, it's my bugbear with loan signings that if a loan signing comes off and he plays well, surely the fucking motivation is to is to sign them. Chong being the exception because, like like Carl said. It, he's probably got a bigger fish to fry. And I don't know whether he's a great fit for the championship. I don't. That, that's well, the thing I would say. Well, Chong and Hernandez, both of their contracts run out. Taylor doesn't. We would have to. I, I imagine Forrest had let him go for free, to be fair. If I'm being honest, I do think they'd let him go for free. So th- on paper, they're not completely unattainable. No, no. Um, and Sarkic would probably come at a small fee. Um, Mengi, another loan. It's it's doable. It's doable. But you know, if you were sat there on football manager or FIFA career mode, <laughs> slap a financial takeover in there, life's good. But, I, <laughs> but I, I think the other thing that I think the backstory to this is if the if the owners are going to try somehow to win a little bit of fa- good favour back from the from the supporters. It's pretty straightforward what they need to do if we can keep this sort of this momentum going. You know, it's not like we're winning every game, but there just seems to be something going on there. I think within the team, yeah. And I think that's a that's a fairly easy win. Um, but I just I don't think any of us know. That I'm sure that Harley Dean's wages could at least bring three of them in. <laughs> we're still paying them, though, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. That's we're, we're paying more than Wednesday, or yeah. Apparently. 
So let's just go on to, because I, I think I said the other week when we were, well, after the game, um, I mean, just going back to this this policy that's fairly rigid, but I think if we look at Gordon has always been, not Gordon, Bo's always been really sort of uh, expressed the need for more quality. I know it's not rocket science, but saying it and then actually bringing players that I think probably do up, upgrade you, you know, you do level up. So, Carl, what, what, would, what would you say... Who do you think is having, having the biggest impact on the team and compared to maybe the, the player that he's replacing? Crikey. It's almost as hard as the question before about who I'd want to keep out the bloody loan <laughs> sign-ins. So I, think, <laughs> I think out of all... Th- I'm going to leave Ted's out of it because I think he's you know ha- sw- having to learn to swim a lot faster in very deep water than I think we probably would have liked with the injuries we've got. Um, and I think he's acquitted himself very well, but I think he's still learning his game. You know, he's 19. Um, it's obviously, well, it's either one of the new three, isn't it? I think, you know, I think for 400k, Bakuna is ridiculous. And I think for me, he has improved or shown us what Gardner and Woods can do yeah. with that little bit of quality. They know if they give the ball to Bakuna and he's got his back to someone, the Bakuna is able to do something with it. Yeah. And, you know, I think JJ's done really well this season for a 17-year-old, but he isn't obviously anywhere near that level yet. No. I think, despite my saying a few weeks ago that I would keep central, I think it's been made very obvious that whilst he does run around like a headless chicken and make a nuisance of himself, that is about it. He can't even trap a ball. So you, you look at that difference, and I think Bakuna on his own, without even thinking about Hernandez and Taylor, just absolutely increases your potential in the midfield for, for a ball playing team. Do you know what I mean? We're no longer having to bypass the midfield because they're going to yeah. lose it. We can play it through. And I think that was very evident on um, Saturday. Yes, there were some long balls, but we were playing through the middle, which we've yeah. not really done. And every time we've tried to, it's gone horrendously wrong. Um, so I think it would probably be Bakuna. And he's, I mean, I think, you know, we paid what, six, seven million for Sundic and 400k for Bakuna. It says it all. Doesn't it really? Um, so I would I would go with Bakuna just because I think he just gives you that little bit. He'll get the ball with his back to one on the touchline, and you know he's not going to run it out of play or kick it against himself and get it out of play or play it backwards. He's going to look to turn and go forward. And if he has to go backward, he's spinning the other way to make a run to get the ball back. Yeah. Um, but also to the defensive side of his game, similar to what Taylor did, you know, he was running 50 yards back, he was running across the field to make a tackle okay Sunjic runs but how often does Sunjic's tackles come off as well so yeah, yeah it, Bakuna for me is the one that has really lifted the middle of the park and it's just given us that option to play football rather than try to play football, get it wrong and result to, to hoofball yeah. So t- Tom, who do you, do you think's had the, again I get, the player that's had the most impact in comparison to I guess the, the player or players they've maybe replaced that have played in similar positions this season? Uh, the players had the biggest impact. Ooh. Um, I think it obviously comes down to um, the Caribbean trio. Um, and it's sort I don't of... I love that, that you've got the title in there. Well done. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure he'll be uh, smiling away at that. Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh, it'd have to be one of those three. Um, I feel like if it's a process of elimination, you probably eliminate Bakuna first. Um, that's just down to probably goal involvements, really. Um, then you'd look at Taylor and Hernandez, who's had a bigger impact. I'd probably say of late, Taylor um, has had the biggest impact on the squad. Um, I'd say Hernandez offers more, but Taylor has had the bigger impact. And obviously that is the question. So I will say Lyle Taylor has had the biggest impact on this squad um, of late. And uh, hopefully long may it continue. Yeah, I, I think for me, it's um, it's interesting when, as Blues fans, you get into this sort of kid yourself mould that, mode that uh, certain players are actually, you know, we, how many times we've said, oh, you know, Sunic is definitely the best season he's had so far. And, you know, it's, uh, 
Juki is, and I'm not, I'm not digging out Juki in any way, shape, or form. Far from it. But I just think that you know, whether it's Juki, whether it's Hogan, whether it's Deeney, you know, he hasn't actually covered himself in, in glory. And you know, oh, you know, they played well today. You know, the goal against Millwall, great finish, still lost the game. You know, it's like we're we're constantly just looking for anything that is just going to take us to the next game. Whereas now you look at, you know, Bakuna for Sunic, just totally, totally without any question, a much, much better player. And, you know, we're all sort of a bit, um, yeah, questioning when uh, Sanchez moved on and, on, you know, he's obviously injured and then started to do 10,000 keepy uppies on social media. <laughs> Uh, in the Mediterranean, and you're like, okay, interesting. But Hernandez is infinitely better simply because he's built more for the for the championship. You know, how many times would San- uh, Sanchez go down cheaply? Whereas, you know, Hernandez, I mean, if, if that tackle had gone in on Sanchez... <laughs> Sanchez doesn't even come close to Hernandez, and no. I will stand by that for the rest of my life. No, no he, he, he doesn't, and, and, you know, but we'll, get, we'll look back at, I think, was it the goal he scored? Was it against... Cardiff. Reading, Cardiff, and and you know we'd seen that on all the highlight reels before he he came. And like you know he's going to do that every week, but well, he did it once. And I'm not saying he's a poor he was a poor signing because I think in that at that time lots of assists in a crap side. But Hernandez is just an obvious level up, and I think we you know with Taylor you've now got a player that out of all of our strikers, I'm not going to label any of them out of all of them. If I wanted to anybody with a chance in front of goal, it's Taylor. And and I know that sounds ridiculous because I've only he's only played four bloody games, but this shows how shit we are. Because you just you know, Hogan has got to do it instinctively because he thinks about it, he never scores. Deeney has just looked off it, g- glimpses but off it. And Juki, you just never know. You just you know, it's he, he scored a lot of goals for blues, but you could never, I don't think you could say you give him that, that guilt edge chance, he's going to take it. So, you know, to, to get those three signings that genuinely, genuinely are better, and I think any Blues fans that, that have watched us play are better than what came before, it, it's got to be a major, major positive. And, and I'm, as I said before on the pod, what I'm looking forward to more than anything else is to see what they can earth from a defensive point of view. Because logic dictates, if they can find Bakuna, then... Christ, what can they find in defence? And I think that will make just the the biggest change altogether. So, um, and, and you know, we were talking before we came on air, and I think the interesting thing, and I'll, I'll, I will check it out there, um, and I'll open up with with, with you, Carl. So, Lee Bowyer's stock, do you think it's gone up this season or down? And on that basis, <laughs> let, let, let's say we, we have a decent end to the season, finish 14th, 15th. Why would he stay? When we're on the verge of going 3-0 down to Bournemouth, <laughs> I wasn't necessarily that happy with Mr. Bowyer. Um, but I think that's just the way football fans are. I think if you look at... I think you need to look at the the, the season in segments to really answer the question. Up to now, obviously, we don't know what's going to happen in the next 13 games, whatever it is. Um Take us up to the Bristol City game, and I think his stock was incredibly high. Um, we then obviously have been on that horrendous run, and it's kind of sunk a lot. And I think it's slowly starting to, to redeem itself, and that is all based around the players that he has got available. And I know it seems like a really obvious one to say, if you've got quality players, you can play football. But when he's got the players, look at the performances we've had. So I think his stock has probably risen a bit for the job he's doing when you think about the state of the club as a whole, really, you know, I mean, what Bakuna is the only player we've actually sent, spent money on in the last, let's ignore last January, but in the last two windows, other than loan signings, I think, if I'm right. And, okay, we're not mid-table yet, but more performances like Saturday, and we will be. And we're 16 points clear of relegation, which I think we were second bottom or near the bottom this time last year. His stock's got to be high. You know, I'm not saying that he's the best manager in the league by a long shot, but it's got to be high for the job he's doing. If he does keep us mid-table or, or get us towards the 14th, 13th, which will be our fin- highest finish for six or seven years or whatever it is, why would he stay? I'd like to think that he believes in this 
I hate this term, but project. Um, and I'd like to think that he, you know, he's working, seems to be working well with Craig for one. They seem to be working well together. And I think that seems to whatever reason filter through to the people that needs to filter through to, to put the, the money forward for these players. I'd like to think that he'd like to at least see how the transfer window goes. But I guess if a, <clears throat> I don't think if a, if a relegated Newcastle come in from, because I think that's why they've got Eddie Howe personally, but if a team that comes down from the Prem comes knocking for him, would he find that hard to say no to with a higher budget? Would any manager find that hard to say no to? You know, So I'd like to think that he'd like to stay out of the feeling for the club. You know, I think a lot of the fans have made it very clear at games and stuff that they're behind him. And I'd like to think that he would stay, but, you know, if a bigger club comes knocking, not necessarily a bigger club, but a club with a bigger budget and let's say a, maybe a higher chance of going up and owners who he can actually talk to, then who can blame him for going? But yeah, I, I'd like him to, to stay. And even if we finish where we are, I think he needs to stay because he started something here and he needs to see the job through. Yeah. Tom, what, what do you think on, on Boya? Assuming that we, I don't know, maybe get a couple of defenders back and, uh, you know, 13 games, probably another three or four wins, going to be mid-table. Um, and, and I think, again, going back to short memories, it's it, it on the face of it, it's a decent job in my, in my view, but what, what, what do you think? Uh, I don't think uh, Boya will go anywhere for a while. To be honest, if... If, if I don't know, I feel like you, you look at it on paper, he has done a really good job. Um, but I don't think football owners will see it that way. Um, you know, I you uh, at the end of the day, football's a results game, and you look at our results this season, they're, they're not great. They're, they're not. Um, I mean, even if you go back to the start of the season, there was fairly high hopes. Um, because of the business we'd done, started well as we usually do. Um, and then we just end up in this situation where we are now and we just sort of fester in that bottom half. Um, but I do I do think we're a better side than we have been in previous years. Um, and I, I think he's fully committed to the cause. I think there's better managers out there that would go to bigger and better places. I think, again, if he was to ever leave, it would probably be in a similar vein of another former club. But you look at where his other former clubs are, I don't think he'll be going anywhere anytime soon. So uh, I'd, I'd, I'd say it's fine. I think he's quite excited with what he's building and he wants to be the one that turns it around. And I think that's sort of the narrative with most of the people at the club at the moment behind the scenes. They, they just want to be the ones that can turn it around. And you know, you can sort of see that desperation to do well, um, but sometimes that can be costly if you're not patient. So we'll have to wait and see uh, how things go. But I'm looking forward to the future under Bowie. You know, we're, we're making the right signings. He believes in himself um, and he believes he has what it takes to get out of this league. So uh, we'll have to wait and see. But it's all about personnel um, and just change. We've got to get rid yeah. of some of the dead wood in the squad. Um, and rebuild and uh, I look forward to that next season but the ownership wise they've clearly made multiple false promises to Bowyer I think that's quite clear um, and life will be better when they're gone um, but for now they're here and if they just keep you know it's all well and good seeing them invest in these little things outside the ground but for one, the two giant badges on the front of the stadium, I actually think look quite ugly. Um, they're just they've just been slapped on. Um, it it just I don't know. It feels like something you do on paint. Um, <laughs> whereas some of the designs, you know, the on the other sides are quite nice. But the two big badges, I don't know. Don't know. It just doesn't settle right with me. I quite like the way it was playing at the front with the. Welcome to Birmingham City, blah, 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 blah. If you're going to put a badge anywhere, put it on the back of the goddamn Gil Merrick. We've been asking that <laughs> for, that question for a very, very long time. To be honest, I actually think it's down to the council that we didn't Probably. get that done. Yeah. Um, which doesn't surprise me because I don't think Blues actually have much luck with the council. But hey-ho, 
um, if if the if Birmingham City Centre doesn't want to see a mighty glorious view from over there of a Blues badge on the back of the stadium, then sadly so be it. Um, but I don't know. I feel like they they're they're spending money on cheap things to keep us happy. Um, yeah, when yeah. that's not the way to do it. Just just spend money on players, players. <laughs> well, I, I think. Yeah, you're right. It, it, it's it's token gestures. I think it's low hanging fruit, and it's just a bit of a insult to our intelligence. To be brutally honest with you, I think I think the key the key to all of this is, I mean, I, I personally really rate Bowie. You know, I, I I think I've said it many many times. I think the difference between you said we obviously we had a good seat start of the season. You're right, and we have had before. But it was a team full of shit houses that as soon as it was relatively easy, they, they thought, okay, well, it's a decent start. We could put our feet up. They did. Um, and some of those players have gone. I hope the rest leave at the, in the summer. And then it's really going to be down to how much will they back him. Now, if it's loan signings, fine. If he can unearth maybe another Bakuna in a different position, then perfect. And I think that is then the time where we can really hand on heart, I think, at Christmas, really say whether he, he's got the makings of a manager that could take us out of this league or not. Um, I don't want to see Pedersen in a blue shirt next season. Colan would be a bit harsh, but if he moved on, I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. Um, and, and I think that's really it as far as, I mean, Sunic obviously, but he's not getting a game. But that's the what I'd class the last four or five years of just turgid just nothing players out of the club and then we can start again. Um, and that's the time where it's not about slapping badges on buildings. It's not about, you know, fixing scoreboards. It's about put your money where your mouth is, is a good manager and give him what he's asking within reason, because what he's got, what he's done with those three signings, fucking hell, it's not, it cost, it's cost next to nothing. And, you know, if we can then roll that out for four, five, six players, then that's that's how I will measure him, and if he gets if he gets those players, and it's we I think hopefully when we're doing the pod at the start of next season, we're genuinely excited to see what's coming, and then I think that's where we we can measure his performance. But uh, I think the ne- obviously the next uh, measurement of performance is a, a very tough game at the weekend. Um, you know, a, a side that's probably gone back to its roots of. Pretty turgid shit, but effective football. Um, so, th- thoughts on the game at the weekend, Tom? What, where, 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 how do you think it's going to go? Um, Stoke game, it's going to be tough. Um, they're obviously a good side. Uh, been a bit out of form, actually, of late. Um, and another one that's shown glimpses of what it can be and is supposed to be has just fallen off and largely down to injuries. Um, you know, Nick Powell probably being the biggest injury that Stokes sustained, considering how much of an how much of an impact he probably had on that Stokes side, especially first half of the season. Um, so yeah, and but the the addition of Josh Madger, you know, two goals in two games, we were linked with him as well. Sort of looks written in the stars for him to grab a goal. Um yeah, it's not going to be easy, but we do seem to play all right whenever we play Stoke. So um, hopefully, you know, like we do with Luton, we can continue that sort of particular team form, if you will. Um, and yeah, I I just hope we can get something out of the game. I take a point away at Stoke because they are a good side and they are starting to find their feet a little bit again. Uh, especially with some good additions in January, like Josh Madger and Lewis Baker. Lewis Baker has definitely surprised me. He's been like here, there and everywhere, loan-wise, um, and never really settled, but he does seem to have found a home at Stoke, so it's not going to be easy. Um, I think they'll be looking to bounce back after throwing away what could have been a huge three points at the city ground, and they'll probably feel they should have won that game against Forest as well. So uh, they'll be looking to bounce back, whereas hopefully we'll be looking to sort of carry on a bit of a good run, build build some momentum. Um, but sadly with Blues, we don't... You look at us this season, consistency is the last thing we've had, yeah. um, to be honest with you. So uh, 
we'll, we'll see, but I would I would take a draw, but I'd like us to get a win and I wouldn't rule it out, that's for sure. Uh, Carl, thoughts? Yeah, I think it's going to be incredibly tough. I think Stoke generally have been a tough team to play this year. And I think, OK, we could have beaten them at St Andrews at the start of the season, but I think 0-0 was probably a fair result on the day. Um, yeah, I think I think we've got to go there and be happy with the point. I think anything more than that is just a bonus. Um, I would like us to to go there and have a go, but there are times we've gone to teams this season I think we've looked scared. But I'm, what I'm hoping is the confidence from Saturday's game will just flow through, you know, and it's shown them that they can play football against the top 10 side, albeit, you know, maybe then one of the weaker top 10 sides, Luton. So, yeah, tough game, uh, decent additions in January, decent players all over the park in general. Um, but, yeah, I think think probably a one or draw would, would be enough, you know, take a point from there again and carry that performance through to um, the Reading game on Tuesday night, Tuesday week. Yeah. And you know that's really that's the game we really need to be targeting to win out of the two. But um, yeah, point would be be enough, I think, for us this weekend. Yeah, I, I just hope that we don't approach the game in that sort of similar, relatively pragmatic way that we've done. I think in part certainly against Bournemouth, a little bit against Sheffield United, where we we just didn't really get it down and play. I, I'd rather see us, like you said, see see if that can be effective against another decent side. Um, going to be tough because they're going to be in our faces. But yeah, I, I think to uh, yeah probably be incredibly boring. I'm probably with both of you. I think uh, draw feels like probably the the most likely outcome. I can't see us cle- keeping a clean sheet. If I'm being honest, I think they're going to be pose a much more of a potent threat than uh, than Luton did at the weekend. But we look like we've got a goal in us, and my God, I didn't think I'd be saying that at this time of the season. <laughs> so, um, yeah, one, one, two, two, something like that. Um, but it, it, it's good to, I, th- I think, go in with a little bit of a bit of optimism. But, but you're right, Carl. I mean, the Reading game is that that sort of. If it, if there was any doubt, there certainly wouldn't be if we beat them. Um, so I, I think that's really got to be the focus. So um, that's why you know we won't win that game. <laughs> oh, undoubtedly. I will be yeah. Stoke and then. Uh, absolutely guaranteed. So, uh, so yeah. Right. Um, well, I would say uh, let's have a let's have a quick dream pick before we go. Um, without obviously, it's going to be one of probably one of the trio. But uh, Carl, as it was your birthday on Saturday, you can go first, and it has your uh, trademark dream pick. It's a really boring and obvious one, but I'll go with Hernandez. He's the only one I've not backed in, in, in the whole of this pod, so I'll choose him this time. Um, just because I just think he gives us that, that he's got the pace, he's got the power, he's got the feet, the trickery, the vision. You know, I mean, the goal he scored at the weekend, he should have hit that about 10 seconds before he actually did, and he still scored. So, yeah, I mean, to see him start, and I'm pretty sure he will start, unless anything goes wrong, touch when it doesn't. But, yeah. Him starting alongside the uh, the Taylor and uh, the kind of powerhouses that we've got, the Caribbean powerhouses, then, uh, yeah. Sorry, Caribbean trio. Sorry, Adam. And, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I'll be edited out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, of course right. um, but yeah, Hernandez to start, which I think is, you know, he's probably going to be one of the first names on the team sheet alongside the other two, but he'd be my pick for the game. Yeah. Tom? Um Going to go for a bit of a different one, actually. Um, I hope he comes back injury, from injury and is fit for the game, but I'm actually going to go for Scott Hogan. And I'm going Scott Hogan for shit house purposes only, um, <laughs> just because I know there's a little bit of bad blood between him and Stoke because of how poor his loan move was. And obviously, in, in an interview, he did make that comment about how, um, you know, when he was asked about how what how did it affect him playing in an empty stadium. And um, he said, I was used to playing in an empty stadium at the Bet365 anyway. <laughs> so, uh, th- there we are. Um, but I, I do think Scotty would love a goal against Stoke because um, he definitely got a lot of stick when he was there. So, uh, yeah, just for shithouse purposes and shithouse purposes alone, Scott Hogan. I, I want to see the celebration. Yeah, well, I'm, I'll, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll see your shit house and raise you a bigger shit house. So obviously, Mr. Taylor is my dream pick. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know it's a bit uh, obvious, but uh, yeah, definitely one, one player that 
really, really enjoy watching play uh, for, for lots and lots of reasons. So, uh, so yeah. Right, boys. But I think time is time. Uh, thank you very much for your contributions, Tom. Um, fantastic outfit. Uh, great effort. And uh, yeah, it'd be interested to see what you, you, you've done next time. Um, and Carl, thanks a lot, mate. Thanks for your contributions. Yeah, no worries, mate. Fun as ever. Right, well, that there we go. That's it for another pod. Um, off to uh, lovely Stoke. Dear, oh dear. Um, I had a few interesting nights there watching the Blues, so uh, hopefully it won't be anything like that. And we will hopefully come away with at least a point, maybe three. But until then, keep right on and stay safe. <laughs>